Well, welcome everyone to uh, Lesson 9 of our course, Old Testament Books of History, Part 1. We're, tonight we're looking at 1 Kings chapters 1 through 11. And we're moving right along in our Bible study. And I, I'm just really blessing God and thank God for you all for your uh, consistency and your persistence and your diligence and long suffering and we're growing we're growing in the Word of God we're learning more about the Word of God every time we read it and so I thank God for this opportunity that we have to come together and study the Word of God we are recording as we usually do on Wednesday nights and uh, the purpose of the recording is to make sure our students who cannot come on live with us are able to pick up the teachings by way of the recording. And then we have people on a worldwide basis who are using these recordings in our schools and in their private lessons and studying. And uh, God is using this ministry to touch a lot of people. So we just thank God. We just praise God and give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank God that we have Jackie Carter with us tonight. Um, she's been uh, confined to the bed most of the week, but she's up and with us on her computer tonight and praying that God will heal her. We just give God the praise for what he's doing in our lives. Uh, I thank, thank God today and continue to thank him that uh, as that tornado blew through Tennessee, uh, that Dustina and her family are safe and and uh, Megan and her family are safe. These are some of our students. Dustina sent me a um, weather map of the overview of their area and um, how the Lord protected the region where they're in. But you know that devastation, that line of devastation, they must have had over 20 people killed in that tornado and many injured. So we thank God. God is... Uh, He's God. He's awesome. He's sovereign. And I thank him that he's keeping you and me safe and that he's uh, using us to build us up to serve him in, in whatever area he has um, placed us in. So we thank God. Thank God Ryan's on the road, so we want him to keep his hands on the wheel as, as he travels. And so let's get ready for our Bible study tonight, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for allowing us to meet once again for a study. We thank you for our students in the Back to Basic School of Ministry. We thank you for people all over the world who are looking for these lessons as they study your word. We thank you for your word, God, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So, Father, we ask for your revelation tonight for your anointing upon us. Holy Spirit, guide us and teach us. We declare that our hearts are teachable. And we bless you and honor you and thank you. Thank you for your, your love for all mankind, Lord. Thank you for stretching forth your hand throughout the whole earth that uh, people can, can receive an understanding of who you are, a revelation knowledge of who you are, and receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And we thank you that you've given us the guidebook for living successfully for you. And so teach us tonight. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, lesson nine of our 12-week course. And tonight we're looking at 1 Kings ch chapters 1 through 11. you find that there are a lot of parallels in uh, the Chronicles. So 1st and 2nd Kings are paralleled by 1st and 2nd Chronicles, but we will be looking at those in the next few weeks. Tonight we want to look at our outline for chapters 1 through 11 in 1st Kings. Chapter 1, we're looking at Bathsheba's request. Bathsheba makes a special request of King David. Uh, we find that King David was on his deathbed, and... Um, some of his sons wanted to take over the kingdom, and um, Adonijah, for one. And then um, 
Bathsheba goes to David and, and, and makes a request of David. Actually, she reminds David of something he had promised. Chapter 2, we're looking at, well, also in chapter 1, we see Solomon anointed as king, and then Adonijah is forgiven. David forgave Adonijah. Fortunately, he did not have to go to war against Adonijah as he had to go to war against his son, Absalom. Chapter 2, we're looking at the death of David. Then Abiathar is cast out. Abiathar is cast out uh, of the priesthood uh, because he went o over to the other side and he followed uh, David's opponents. And then Zadok is made the priest. We're going to meet also in the next couple of chapters a man by the name of Beniah. Beniah. And Beniah, uh, when you see him in the scriptures, he's David's hit man. If David ever needed anybody eliminated, he would call on Beniah. Well, the Bible describes Beniah as the uh, captain of the host. So Beniah actually re becomes the replacement for uh, uh, Joab uh, to lead the king's army. Chapter 3, we're looking at an understanding heart where Solomon prays and asks God for an understanding heart. Okay. An understanding heart. And then we're looking at uh, in chapter 3, some of Solomon's wisdom. You have two mothers who come together. Both had babies, and one baby died, and, and, and both are claiming the baby that is alive. And we see Solomon's wisdom in that situation. Chapter 4 of First Kings, princes are appointed. Princes are appointed throughout the kingdom. And then we look at Solomon's glory. Solomon's glory. Chapter 5, we look at um, Solomon's relationship with Hiram, the king of Tyre. And Tyre is actually Lebanon. And we see cedars from Lebanon, cedars from Tyre. In other words, Tyre, uh, Hiram of Tyre provided the lumber and the timber to build the, the temple and then to build Solomon's house. Chapter 6 of uh, 1 Kings, we see the building of the temple. And then we see the building of Solomon's palace. And then the palace is furnished. The palace is furnished. And so it, it will take Solomon seven years to build the temple and 13 years to build his own house. Chapter 7, Solomon's own house. We see pillars made of brass and the bases for the pillars are made of brass. We see the temple furnishings. And there's gold, gold all over the place. Um, chapter 8, we're looking at, we will be looking at placing the ark as Solomon prepares the ark for, as Solomon prepares the ark for um, its, its resting place in Jerusalem. Then Solomon praises God and the prayers of the people and the prayers for the people. Chapter 9, we see, we're going to see God's promise to Solomon. And then Solomon builds cities. Chapter 10, we're going to look at the Queen of Sheba as she visited King Solomon. Uh, a great stately visit by the Queen of Sheba, a well known matriarch um, and monarch. We see how she gives tribute to Solomon. And then we we'll, we'll dispel a lot of the myths about Solomon and Sheba. Um, I, I may share some expert excerpts from my book, Black Heroes of the Bible, because Sheba was from, actually the country is, of Sheba is Ethiopia. Now there are two uh, countries that vie for the name of Sheba. There's an, uh, an Arab country name that they called Sheba, and then the Ethiopians claim that uh, Sheba 
is referring to Ethiopia. And a lot of Ethiopian history uh, deals with um, the queen of Ethiopia, Ethiopia and the relationship with Israel. Chapter 11, we see idolatry in Israel. And we see Solomon's adversaries. Solomon was doing very well, ladies and gentlemen. But Solomon had, he had a weakness. He had a weakness. And uh, Solomon had too many women. Solomon had too many wives. And um, his wives led to his downfall. Well, you say, well, well, don't blame it on the women. Well, look, the man had 700 wives and princesses and 300 concubines. I mean, he had just had a, he had a weakness for women. And every, every woman had, uh, had their own God. They worshipped their own God. So you had a plethora. That's a good term. A plethora, meaning a multiplicity of, of, of uh, idols and gods in Israel. And Solomon, not only did he build temples for these gods uh, to please his wives, but Solomon also worshipped some of them. And so we see when we get to around uh, chapter 11 of 1 Kings, Solomon is going uh, to the dark side. Uh, he's been faithful to God for a long time, but the wives, I mean, he had too many wives and he, he, he worshipped the gods of his wives and uh, that destroyed his relationship with God, his relationship with God Almighty. You know, God says, thou shall have no other gods before me. And God means that. God is not going to share his glory with anyone. He will not let, allow anyone to touch his glory. And so Solomon, um, despite what God had promised him uh, earlier on, that prom those promises were contingent upon Solomon's obedience. And ladies and gentlemen, let me say this. Our relationship with God is permanent. God loves us. But our relationship is also uh, contingent upon our faith and obedience to him. Uh, to obey is better than sacrifice. You can't say you love Jesus and live like a heathen. You can't say you love the Lord and then live uh, like a pagan. And so God will judge and God will punish. And we see this in, in uh, Solomon's life. We see David's sin and David repented. But we see his son Solomon. Solomon just went off the deep end. Okay, so God allowed adversaries to come up uh, against Solomon. We see this in chapter 11. Then in chapter 12, the promise to Jeroboam. Jeroboam, a promise to Jeroboam. Then we see whips and scorpions. And then Israel's rebellion. And um, by the time we finish chapter 12 of, of uh, 1 Kings, by the time we finish chapter 12, Israel is in civil war. There's open rebellion going on. And all because of the disobedience of the people. And as we study um, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, as we look at the the readings of writings of Ezra, Nehemiah, and, and Esther, um, and 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 look at Old Testament history, we can draw many parallels between Old Testament history and modern history, and um, America and the nations today can learn a lot about God and God's requirements. You cannot, cannot defy God and expect to prosper. You cannot uh, disobey God and continue living in sin. And the Bible warns us, what shall we say then, the Bible says in Romans 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And then in verse 2, we get the answer. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue to live any longer in it? And so God is going to judge sin. We cannot live any old kind of way. 
You can go to church three times every Sunday. You can be in church every day, six days, seven days a week. And, and going to church does not save you. Going to church uh, uh, makes, does not impress God one bit, ladies and gentlemen. You can have religious symbols all over your house. You can have uh, 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 placemats and placards and signs and this. But if you are bent on sinning against God, all of that other stuff means nothing. God requires uh, obedience. He, he, he's looking for uh, people who will obey him. The Bible says in First Chronicles 16, 9, which is uh, one of my favorite passages of Scripture, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to find, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are are perfect toward him. God is looking right now. Ladies and gentlemen, his eyes are running throughout the whole earth right now. He's seeking somebody who's willing to trust God and obey God so that God can bring to the earth what he desires from heaven. And 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 um, we call this dreams and visions. God will give you a dream. God will give you a vision. God will put a vision in your heart, in your spirit about what he wants to bring to the earth. And many people say, well, God showed me this, and I got a sign from God, but I don't think I can do this. People need to stop right there and say, no, of course I can't do this. But the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when God gives you a vision, when God gives you a vision for your life, when God gives you a plan, when he shows you something he wants done, trust him. And if he says, I want you to do this, you can do this, but you cannot do it on your own. No, you don't have the facilities. No, you don't have the means or the ability, but we can do all things through Christ. There is nothing impossible for God. So learn how to trust the Lord. And when God gives you a plan, gives you a vision, uh, write the vision down. We learned this uh, a few years ago, early on. And for those of you who are new to this ministry, Habakkuk, read the book of Habakkuk. Read that second chapter, that third chapter, uh, where God says, write the vision. Write the vision. Where Habakkuk said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wait on my watchtower. I'm going to situate myself on my prayer station. And I'm going to watch and see what he's going to say to me. In other words, when you have a, when you have a question from God, for God and, and, and you have a burden in your heart and, and you want to know, well, well, Lord, what's going to happen to the United States of America? And what's going to happen to uh, 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 this nation? Or what's going to happen here? Or, or what shall I do concerning my family? What shall we do? about this issue when you have a burden or Lord how do you want me to take this gospel forth Lord uh, uh, how, how do you want me to continue this school Wh what shall I do when you have a burden then go before the Lord and learn how to wait on him learn how to wait on him God has given Jack and me he's given us a great plan for ministry uh, in, in the in the near future God's going to do our a great and mighty thing, and and and, and uh, currently we're just waiting on the Lord, and God is just revealing over and over, day by day. He's adding to the vision. Uh, today I spent much of the day writing the vision, and at a certain time I'm going to release it to our board of directors and to others, and about how God wants to grow and prosper this ministry. But when God gives you a plan, you write the vision, and you pray. And you can't talk it with everybody because some people will, hey, listen, some people will talk you out of your God-given vision. Uh, that's why you can't hang out with everybody, ladies and gentlemen. You can't be successful and hang out with everybody if you want to be su successful for Jesus because there are people who will kill your vision. You've got people, they don't have enough faith 
uh, uh, to blow their nose if their nose is running. They don't have enough faith to turn turn the water off if they're uh, running water to to wash dishes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can't hang out with everybody. You've got to know when to cut people off, and then you've got to know when to just be quiet, be still, wait on the Lord, wait for the details. Wait for him to show you. Wait for him to raise up the people to help you to accomplish what he's purposed you to do. Praise God. And, 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 and we see this happening. Karen, we see this happening with you and Pastor Noel and, and the people uh, up, in, up in your area where God has, has developed a new church, a new ministry. We see you all waiting on the Lord, waiting on the vision, and at the same time, you love one another. You don't, you don't fight one another. You don't defeat one another. You support one another. And then you don't tell everybody your business. You see, when you let everybody in on your business, there are some people that try to come and steal your vision. I've, I've met people in this lifetime who try to steal my vision. I mean, if God said for me to do something, you share with somebody. If you don't trust them, they'll go to somebody who's supposed to help you and try to get them to help you to rob you of your vision. So learn how to wait on the Lord. Learn how to wait on God's timing. And should the vision uh, 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 delay, should it tarry, the Bible says wait on it. And I offered uh, to some of many of you, and, and, and many of you have a copy. I sent you a PDF version on what I call the book I wrote, Faith Visions. That book has helped so many people whom God has spoken to about ministry, has given a vision to, and that book helps people to understand the three stages of every faith vision and how to get that vision renewed and how to accomplish what God has purposed you to do. Now, now I walk way out here. I'm supposed to be talking about First Kings, but I believe that what I'm sharing with you is helpful. So th let's take a look at First Kings, and uh, let's try to, as we study uh, the books of the Old Testament, let's try our best to obey God and be careful who we associate with, and uh, don't let sin rule in your lives. And when we sin, because we're all sinners, uh, the Bible says every one has, of us has sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we do not dwell in sin. We do not live sinful lives. Every one of us is going to commit sin, but we don't stay in it. And once the Holy Spirit reveals to you that you have sinned, repent. Or if God sends someone to you and that person talks to you, don't get angry at the person. Don't throw stones at the postman. Just receive it and repent. And then uh, repentance means you humble yourself. You tell God, I'm sorry. God, I didn't mean it. And, 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 and walk away from it. And, and, and the next time that temptation comes, uh, walk away from it because that temptation is coming back because Satan does reruns. He plays replays. If he can get you to sin once, he, he'll try to get you to sin again. And so it's coming around again, but you've got to learn how to build your faith on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and trust the Holy Spirit. Trust the Holy Spirit. That is why we we practice walking with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. We don't just wait for Sunday. We walk with him on a daily basis. We yield to him. We surrender to him. We study the word of God. We pray. We do this on a daily basis. Then when temptations come, trials come, sickness comes, uh, 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 hard times come, we have a strong, firm foundation. We can look back and say, well, God, uh, this is deja vu been here before and you deliver me and so I'm not going this way and so we learn so learn from the scriptures ladies and gentlemen learn from don't just read the Bible don't just read it because it's good literature which it is but learn let us learn the lessons that we can from scripture let us learn about from these heroes of faith these men and women of God uh, who were on top for a while and, so, and then they were on the bottom how, learn how they survive. Learn how they put their trust in the Lord. Learn the lessons from those who turn their backs on God so that we don't turn our backs on God. So the Bible says in uh, chapter 1, Now King David was old and stricken in years, 
and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. <laughs> now, now if, if you live in my house, ladies and gentlemen, I'm laughing because uh, Jackie's in the office next door, next in the next room, and she's probably smiling right now. And 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 she said, "Yeah, she this could read, this could read." Now my husband Leroy was old and stricken in years, and and he wears layers of clothes, but he still can't get any heat. That's me in the winter time, ladies and gentlemen. That's me on March fourth, twenty twenty. I wear clo I wear layers. I got thermals on right now. I'm in my office. I have. I had my heater on today, and I'm in my office, but I have layers of clothes. That's, that's the way I roll. Dr. Jean Brad and I were rolling this way for years. Wintertime and I, wintertime and I, we have a contest. Uh, winter, during the winter months from late October until probably the end of March, uh, uh, you'll see me wearing thermals. You'll see me wearing layers. But look at this strip scripture again. Now, King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. In other words, he couldn't get warm. He was getting old, uh, uh, and and uh, and he was he was he was stricken in years. So David was about to leave the scene. Verse two. Wherefore his servants said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king a young virgin. And let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. Now, visualize this. David's old. He's about to die. He's got, I mean, they put all these clothes, clothes on him, and he can't get warm. His body's cold. And so they said, and they said well, let us get a, a, young, a, a young virgin and, and let her minister to him. In other words, let her serve him him his meals and let her take good care of him and the fact that he's gone he's seeing her around uh that that's that's supposed to warm him up keep him warm but it didn't work ladies and gentlemen now i know jackie carter said hey don't try it don't go there leroy carter don't you dare go there and i ain't gonna be a fool i ain't going there verse three ryan keep your hands on the steering wheel as you're driving brother so they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coasts of Ishmael, of Israel, and found Abishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair and cherished the king and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. So she ministered <coughs> to him. She served him his meal. She, uh, uh, she did the house cleaning and all that, but he knew her not, meaning there was no carna carnality. Okay, uh, so they knew they knew King David. Uh, King David couldn't couldn't uh, he 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 couldn't get warmed up even with her there. So they knew he was on his way to leave the scene. Okay, so seeing the situation, look what his son Adonijah does. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, Haggith was one of David's wives. He exalted himself, saying, "I will be king." Okay, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. Verse 6, and his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, why hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. So his father had never reprimanded him, never beat him, never had to punish him. Punish him. Verse 7, and he conferred with Joab. So here's uh, Adonijah conferring with Joab. Now, Joab was the captain of the king's army. Joab and David hung out together for many years. But Joab, <laughs> Joab had some issues, uh, especially when the king had said, don't kill Adonai, uh, Absalom. Well, Joab killed Absalom. And Joab had his own issues, and Joab had, Joab had his own way of running the, run, running the army, which conflicted with King David. So Joab joined up with Adonijah while David was on his uh, sickbed. So he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the priest. And they following, Adonijah helped him. So we find the, the priest, Abiathar, and the leader of the army, Joab, 
going over or crossing over to support Adonijah, the king's son. But Zadok, the priest, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, verse 8, and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Rei, and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. David still has some very faithful people who stuck with him, even though he's very sickly and old. Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, uh, stayed, stayed with David. And you might want to underline, underscore Benaiah, in that verse, because his name's going to pop up several times in the next couple of chapters. And Benaiah, whenever David need to rub somebody out, in other words, anytime anybody came against David, or or David was warned against someone, or David didn't trust someone because of their disloyalty, uh, David would call Benaiah. And the next thing you next thing you know. That person who uh, rose up against David was no longer on the scene. So I call Benaiah David's hit man. Okay, so um, going further down, we see that uh, Adonijah declared himself king. And then uh, Nathan the prophet. God raises up prophets, ladies and gentlemen. And he sends his prophets to his people. And they 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 speak the word of God. You, now look here. Today, many Christians, especially in American Christianity, prophets are people who 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 they predict the tornadoes, they predict the the, the cyclones and the and, and and the weather, and 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 then they build their ministry on the weather pre predictions. Well. Uh, Dustina can tell you nobody told us much about any tornadoes coming in Tennessee, and Megan can say the same. And some of the people in, May, in uh, Dustina's area only had five minutes warning about uh, uh, the tornadoes. And and uh, but yet we've got we've got prophets, especially here in America, and they build ministries on on prophecy, on, on, on tornadoes and cyclones, and 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 and, and many. I'm going to say it. Many are missing God because they, their, their whole ministry is built on uh, following earthquakes and tornadoes and weather patterns, where, whereas we have this whole gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got this whole gospel. You've got prophets who are, are famous for their, their take on uh, 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 a tornado or an earthquake or a volcano. But they know nothing about love your neighbor, as you said. They don't preach love your neighbor, or they don't preach about uh, homosexual marriage, or they don't preach about this or that. Uh, but God wants us to study the whole gospel, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're a prophet of God, that means uh, if you're called to be a prophet, that means your heart ought to be open to God. Your ears ought to be attuned to God. You ought to know the scripture, study the scripture, and have a deep, sincere prayer life. And then a prophet needs to be sure that we put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God, ladies and gentlemen, because there are all kinds of voices that speak to prophets and all kinds of voices that speak to people. And a lot of these uh, uh, people speaking to, to God's people who call themselves prophets are not of the Lord. So we've got to be very careful, ladies and gentlemen. But praise God. David had Nathan, and David knew that whenever Nathan said something, it was real. David found that out. Um, David also had Gad. Whenever Gad spoke, David knew it was real. And so David was the one who had told, uh, I'm sorry, Nathan, Nathan, whenever he spoke, it was real, and when Gad spoke, it was real. And so when Nathan had told David earlier on about uh, Bathsheba and, 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 and David's relationship, David repented. And so there are prophets God brings into our lives, and we know they are men or, and women from God, and we ought to pay heed. We ought to not be so puffed up that nobody can teach us anything. Verse 11, so wherefore Nathan spoke unto Bathsheba, the son, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign? And David our Lord knoweth it not. Now therefore come, 
let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou mayest save thine own life and the life of thy son Solomon. So Nathan went to Bathsheba and gave Bathsheba the word how to save herself and her son Solomon. Ladies and gentlemen, it pays to listen to the prophets of God. And it pays to know that a prophet is a true man or woman of God. So uh, verse 13 says, Go and get thee un in unto David. Go and get thee in unto King David, and say unto him, Dost thou, didst not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? Why then doth Adonijah reign? So David uh, is challenged by Bathsheba. And Bathsheba's challenged by Nathan the prophet. Nathan went to Bathsheba. And he said, hey, hey, you better talk to your husband because, you know, he, he told you earlier on that uh, Solomon is to become the king after him. Well, look, Adonijah has declared himself king. So you go and talk to your husband. And that's what she did. And uh, verse 16, and Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance of the, unto the king. She didn't break into his room and, and, and she didn't uh, uh, push her weight around. In fact, verse 15 says, And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old, and Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king. So Abishag might have been serving him me a meal or uh, cleaning up his room, but Abishag was there because this young uh, virgin was placed there to try to keep David alive. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto, unto the king. And the king said, What wouldest thou? Well, what's on your mind? She said unto him, My lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth. And now, my lord the king, thou knowest it not. Adonijah's taken over the kingdom, and you don't even know it. And he's uh, uh, slain oxen and, and fat cattle, having a feast and making sacrifices. And all Israel, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee, verse 20, that thou shouldest tell them who shall sit on the throne of my Lord the king after him. So Bathsheba has a very sensitive but serious assignment to go to the king and say, this is an urgent matter. It's a very critical matter in the history of the nation. And Adonijah has declared himself king. And, and what you had said early on, you had mentioned that Solomon was going to follow you as the king. But the nation wants to know now, whom have you chosen? Verse 22, and lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. So Nathan told her, you go talk to the king. Then later I'm coming in uh, while you're conversing. And they told the king, verse 23, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, hast thou said, Adonijah shall reign after thee, after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? So um, Nathan reminded David of what he said. Verse 26, But me, even me, thy servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon, hath he not called? So Adonijah has called a feast. He's called all, he's called Joab, he's called all these other people, Abiathar and so many others, but he hasn't called me. He hasn't called uh, Benaiah. He hasn't called Zadok uh, uh, to the feast. So there's a revolution going on. Is this thing done by my lord the king? Verse 27, verse 28, Then King David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, As the Lord liveth, that hath redeemed my soul out of all distress, even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so, 
will I certainly do this day. So David says, uh, uh, as the Lord liveth, the Lord who redeemed my soul out of all distress. Yes, I have made a promise, and that's the way it's going to be. Verse 31, then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, let my Lord King David live forever. So Bathsheba, she was a very humble woman. She bowed before the king. She honored her king. And, and uh, even the fact that there was a, a young maiden ministering to the king, Bathsheba honored her husband. Then verse 32, verse 32, And King David said, Call me Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the Lord. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and cause Solomon my son to ride upon mine own mule, and bring him down to Gion. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there, over king over Israel. And blow ye with the trumpet, and say, God save King Solomon. Then ye shall come up after him, that he may come and sit upon my throne, for he shall be king in my stead. And I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. Verse 36, And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen. The Lord God of my Lord the king say so too. As the Lord hath been with my Lord the king, even so be he with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord King David. So Benaiah uh, pledged his allegiance to King David and to King Solomon. And so um, Verse 39, and they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, God save King Solomon. Uh, Zadok the priest took a horn of oil and anointed Solomon. Verse 39 of 1 Kings chapter 1. Verse 41, and Adonijah and all the guests that were with him heard it as they made an end of eating. I mean, they were having a big old feast. Adonijah had set himself up as king. And they heard the trumpet blowing and a whole lot of noise. Wherefore is this noise of the city being in an uproar? And while he yet spake, behold, Jonathan, the son of Abiathar the priest, came. And Adonijah said unto him, Come in, for thou art a valiant man, and bring us good tidings. Now this is not Jonathan, the son of Saul. Jonathan, the son of Saul, was dead. And Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, Verily, my Lord, King David hath made Solomon king. And the king has sent him with Zadok the priest, etc., etc. Okay, verse 46, And also Solomon sitteth on the throne of the kingdom. And so Adonijah is afraid, and uh, all his guests were afraid. Look at verse 49. And all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid. And rose up and went every man his way. I mean, they were having this great feast. Adonijah declared himself to be king. And they were having a good time. They were partying. They were getting down. And all of a sudden, they heard the trumpet blow and a whole lot of noise in the city. And Nathan had anointed uh, Solomon to be king. And so all of Adonijah's friends fled from him. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be careful who you hang out with. Everybody making a whole lot of noise ain't your friend, ain't on your side. And everybody making a whole lot of noise is not of the Lord. You've got to be very selective who you surround yourself with and who you connect with. Okay, Adonijah's friends feared, uh, verse 50, they arose and went. Uh, and Adonijah feared because of Solomon and arose and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar. All his friends fled him. They left him. They split the scene. They left him all by himself. And so verse 50 says, Adonijah feared because of Solomon and arose and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you see, whenever you see in the, in the Old Testament that somebody goes into the tabernacle and lays hold on the horns of the altar, that means they're in the outer court and they grab the horns of the sacrificial altar 
and that's their place of prayer and 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 sometimes we see in scripture that that was their last place we see this with Joab that was Joab's last place Joab ran to the altar and he grabbed the horns of the altar and he held on and he wouldn't let go he felt that in that position people wouldn't bother him the, the enemies would not come and take him but they you, they dragged uh, Joab off the altar and killed him now we see Adonijah grabbing the horns of the altar in other words that was his plea for mercy but Solomon had mercy on Adonijah verse 51 and it was told Solomon behold Adonijah feareth King Solomon for lo he hath caught hold on the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear unto me today that he will not slay his servant with his sword. Now Solomon and Adonijah were brothers now. And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, there shall not an hair of him fall to the earth. But if wickedness be found in him, he shall die. That's what Solomon said. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in those days you could not trust people. People could not be trusted. And Solomon had the wisdom to discern whether or not someone was trustworthy or not. And you and I, we need the wisdom of the Lord to discern whether or not we can trust people. We walk the walk, and, but we've got to learn whether we can uh, trust people. That's why the Bible says the, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, the bone and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There are people who will come into your life. There are people you might already have in your life, and you've got to ask God, God, can I trust this person? Can I really trust this person? And, uh, and, 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 and seek the Lord for whether or not that person is trustworthy. Okay, so chapter 2, we see the death of David, Abiathar is cast out, and Zadok is made priest. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself thou turnest thyself that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me saying if thy children take heed to their way and walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul there shall not fail thee a man on the throne. And, and uh, Solomon promised to do this. He promised to do this. Okay, so uh, Abiathar is cast out. He's assigned to a, a place to live. And, and, and David told him, this is where you're going to be. And uh, this is where you stay. Then Z uh, Abiathar was cast out as priest. Okay, uh, Adonijah was, was, was confined to his own uh, place, land, where, where he is to live. And uh, Abiathar was cast out. He was kicked out of the priesthood, ladies and gentlemen. He could have been the high priest, but he was kicked out. Zadok became his replacement. And so let's um, go over to chapter 3. Solomon um, was now the king, and he made an alliance, verse 1, with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And he took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Now, Solomon had 700 wives, <coughs> 300 concubines. Well, what's a concubine? A concubine was one he loved, but he, he wasn't married to, you know. Uh, he shacked up with about 300 or more. Uh, uh, they weren't married. He was married to 700 of them. Can you, ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine 
a man being married to 700 women. I mean, you only got 365 days a year. And, 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 and if you see one of one per day, uh, 366 in a leap year, uh, you still you still got wives you won't see until like every other year. I mean, that, that must uh, kind of confuse me. Dr. Gene Bratton, come on, say something about that. She'll catch up with us. Dr. Bratton, are you on with us? The man had too many wives. They brought him down. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. And so David asked God um, when, when, the Lord, the, when the Lord let Solomon know that he was favored, verse 5, chapter 3, In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him that this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. He's, and Solomon said, hey, look, I might have 700 wives. I might have 300 concubines. Well, he didn't have them all at that particular time. But I, I do know this God. I'm but a little child. I don't know how to run this government. He said, I just don't know how to run this government. I need you. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people, that cannot, cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Verse 9, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord, and Solomon had asked him, that Solomon had asked him this thing. So God promised him uh, an understanding heart, and because he did not ask for long life or riches, God promised to prosper him mightily. Verse 15, And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Then, uh, as a test of the new wisdom that Solomon had received from the Lord, Two women, um, they were the, uh, two women, two harlots, two prostitutes. Evidently, they had gotten pregnant, and they had, they were sharing the same house, and they uh, had babies. And one of them lay on the baby and smothered the baby, and the baby died. And so the other one claimed the baby, the living baby. So there were two ladies, two women who were fighting over a baby. And one claimed that the other killed her baby and, and took, her, took hers away. And Solomon uh, exercised great wisdom in this third chapter. And he said, bring me a sword. Bring the baby to me and bring me a sword. And then he commanded one of his soldiers here, cut this baby in half and give her half and give her half. Ladies and gentlemen, Solomon was serious. And the woman whose baby it really was said, no, 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 okay, let her have the child. I'd rather her have the child and have the child live than see you kill the child. And Solomon knew that because of this woman's heart, her willingness to give up the baby, that that was her baby. Because the other one said, <laughs> don't mean anything to me. Yeah, go on and cut the baby. You know, cut the baby up. That's what the other baby, the other woman said. So Solomon his wisdom was spread abroad uh, throughout uh, Israel and throughout the whole earth. Chapter 4, Solomon appointed princes. You can read them. There's a whole list of them, starting with uh, Ben-Hur, uh, which is the movie Ben-Hur was made about this person, verse 8, the son of Hur. 
Um, and then you, you see all on down to um, verse 19, the princes who were appointed. Uh, one prince for each tribe of Israel. And each prince, each prince had the, the charge of providing food for Solomon's table for a month. That meant uh, 10 fat oxen, 20 oxen out of the pastures, 100 sheep besides the deer and the roebucks and the fallow deer and the fat fowl. Uh, each prince had to provide that for Solomon's table so that Solomon could entertain people on a daily basis. Okay, chapter 5, we see the cedars from higher, uh, uh, from um, Hiram of Tyre. Tyre actually is Lebanon, ladies and gentlemen. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants unto Solomon, for he had heard that they had appointed, anointed him king in the room of his father, for Hiram was ever a lover of David. Hiram and David had a very good friendly, friendly relationship. And so Hiram continues this relationship with Solomon. And actually Hiram provides the cedars and the, the trees and the logs and the lumber to build the temple of God and also to build um, Solomon's house and the house for uh, Solomon built a house for his wife, the, the daughter of Pharaoh. That was the only wife we see that has a house built by Solomon. So she must have been uh, one of his uh, his most favorite one. By the way, I write about her, uh, Solomon's black wife. She was from Ethiopia. Uh, and the Ethiopians, it's, it's a confusing history. Uh, when we look at black heroes of the Bible, when we look at Egypt, there were times when Egypt was more Ethiopia than Egypt, and, or Egypt was more Libya than Egypt. Depending on who the ruling army was, the Ethiopians overran Egypt, and so there were some pharaohs who were Ethiopians. And then uh, when the Egypt Egyptians got back in power, the pharaoh was an Egyptian. So this happened to be uh, a pharaoh um, who... Uh, had a, a daughter, and she, he was an Ethiopian pharaoh, and Solomon married her. The story's in here, okay? All right, so we get the cedars from, from uh, Hiram. Later on, Solomon gives Hiram, I think, 12 or 16 cities in Israel, and Hiram was not really pleased with the quality of the cities that Solomon had given to him, so they had a little riff, and uh, it just turned out that um, Hiram was wise, and he stuck with Solomon, and uh, he continued paying tribute, raising up money, fundraising. Hiram was one of um, Solomon's many fundraisers, uh, kings who, in order to stay in good with uh, Solomon, they raise up heaps of money for King Solomon. Chapter 6, building the temple. Building the temple. And Solomon be begins building the temple. Uh, chapter 6 is all about how uh, the requirements for the temple, the materials used in building the temple. God had approved of Solomon to build the temple. Uh, David was not allowed to build the temple because David had shed blood. So chapter 6 gives you a good description of the building of the temple. Chapter 7, but Solomon was building his own house 13 years, and he finished all his house. It took him seven years to build the temple, 13 years to build his own house. And here again we see from verse 2, a lot of the lumber came from the forest of Lebanon, or Tyre. Okay? Chapter 8, we see the placing of the ark in the, in the city of Jerusalem. And now you've got to go back to what we learned last week, ladies and gentlemen. As we finished out 2 Samuel, we see that David bought the threshing floor of Arona. That threshing floor, the eight acres of land 
that King David bought from Arona became the the land upon which Solomon built the temple of God. So this the this the scripture, when we study the scripture, we learn a lot, we see how it meshes together. So chapter eight, placing the ark on the on the mound, the mount that Solomon had constructed to receive the Ark of the Covenant and uh, how the, the, the uh, priests carry that Ark on the staves and how they once they secure the Ark on the mount, then they took the staves and, and a certain place where they had to uh, line up those staves or those poles, okay? Very, very interesting. Um, then chapter 8, Solomon praises God and then he prays for the people. And um, Solomon said, verse 12 of chapter 8, Then spake Solomon, the Lord said that he would dwell in the, in the thick darkness. I have surely built thee an house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. And the king turned his face about and blessed, blessed all the congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and hath with his, hand, with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build an house that my name might be therein, but I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David my father to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David my father, Whereas it was in thine heart to build an house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house unto my name. And the Lord performed, hath performed his word that he spake. Then, verse 22, And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the congregation and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepeth covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. And, and Solomon praises God. He prays and worships God. Uh, and uh, on his knees, he got on his knees. And later on, when he finishes, he gets up off his knees. Wouldn't it be awesome, ladies and gentlemen? Wouldn't it be awesome if the President of the, of the United States would just declare a day of, uh, of sanctification unto the Lord and, 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 and lead this nation and that the nation too, we will humble ourselves before God and lift up our hands before God and declare that he is the God of of this land. Praise God. So God promised, uh, made promises to, to, uh, to uh, Solomon that he would bless the people, bless Solomon, bless the people, and that the people, if they would keep his statutes and, and, and obey him, that God would bless. But if they would turn from the Lord, then God would not bless them. That's... Um, Chapter 9, we see uh, God's promise to, to uh, the people and to Solomon that the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he hath appeared unto him at Gibeah. And you'll see a great parallel to this in Second Chronicles. And when you read Second Chronicles chapter 7, Second Chronicles chapter 7 parallels. First Kings chapter nine, uh, when the when the glory of the Lord filled uh, the temple and the priests couldn't even minister because of the presence of God, wouldn't it be so awesome, ladies and gentlemen, if if we were to have church or even have Bible study and we couldn't speak because of the glory, the presence of the Lord around us? Wouldn't have we wouldn't have to say anything. We just 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 enjoy His presence. Well, that's how it was <clears throat> when Solomon had dedicated the, the temple to the Lord and prayed unto God and led Israel in prayer. Then the glory of the Lord broke out upon the place and fell upon the place. And then um, 
Solomon later uh, dismissed the people. They went back to their homes. They took with them food and, and, and precious gifts. Okay, then <coughs> to uh, speed up to this lesson, the Queen of Sheba came to visit Solomon. Um, ladies and gentlemen, contrary to the movies, you know, they had a movie called Solomon and Sheba, and so many uh, people try to um, talk about a love relationship between Solomon and Sheba. You don't see it anywhere in the Bible. It ain't here in the Bible. It's in the Ethiopian history books, as I mentioned in Black Heroes of the Bible, and um, they even say that Solomon um, fathered a baby uh, through uh the Queen of Sheba, and that baby's name was Menelik, and he became King Menelik of Ethiopia. But we don't know, because we don't know. But the Bible says that she came because she heard about his knowledge and wisdom and fame and glory, and she wanted to find out for herself. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the real history says that she was not as attractive as the Hollywood made her up to be. She had a, uh, things, she had a club foot, and she was crippled. Uh, but she came and she uh, visited Solomon and asked him questions. And the Bible says there was not a question he could not answer. And she said she had heard about him and heard about his wisdom. And so she had seen for herself. And she brought him gold and gold. And then... Uh, uh, ships, the ships of King Hiram of Tyre, the ships that sailed out of Lebanon, sailed uh, to uh, Ophir. And Ophir is another word, <clears throat> another name for Ethiopia, where every three years, every three years, the Queen of Sheba was, would send, send gold and elephants and, and tusks and great riches and animals uh, to King Solomon. Okay, so verse 11, we see idolatry in, in Israel. We're going to try to wrap this up soon. But King Solomon loved many strange women, 11.1. 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, woman, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. God had warned Israel, don't connect yourselves with these women. And Solomon, Solomon had this lust, this jones for the women. Verse 3, and he had 700 wives, princesses, 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. You know, one wife can turn a man from God. One wife. I mean, it doesn't take seven. One wife, uh, uh, one girlfriend can turn a man's heart away from God. And uh, here Solomon has 700 of them and 300 concubines. And he built, verse 5, for Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And so he worshipped Baal and Ashtoreth, and Solomon just lost it. And as a result, he lost the kingdom. And God promised he would not strip the kingdom from Solomon while Solomon was alive because of his promise to David. But after Solomon died, God took the kingdom from Solomon, gave ten tribes to Jeroboam in the north, and then Rehoboam, Rehoboam uh, had two tribes in the south. And Rehoboam was messed up because he did not pay any attention to the older uh, men of Israel. The older men of Israel had wisdom. And Rehoboam, as we'll see starting next week, Rehoboam uh, didn't listen to the older men, and he lost his support. And Rehoboam loses the king, kingship of, Israel, of Judah. Up north, Jeroboam, 
Jeroboam uh, took over the northern kingdom. The kingdom was split. When Solomon dies, the kingdom is, is split. Jeroboam becomes, becomes the king of the northern kingdom, and the northern kingdom is renamed Ephraim or Israel. Ephraim or Israel. And the southern kingdom, uh, mainly made up of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, <coughs> the southern kingdom became known as Judah. And so these two kingdoms ran parallel to each other um, from the time of the death of Solomon, and the northern kingdom fell in 721 B.C., and the southern kingdom 150 years later in 580, 578, somewhere around 580 B.C. Okay, they did not pay heed to what was happening in Israel. And so that great kingdom that David had solidified and given over to Solomon, that great kingdom was destroyed because of the sins of the people. And Solomon was a part of that, uh, that uh, apostasy. And there, uh, as we continue in the scriptures, we'll see how God uh, and the people still, they rebelled against God. Jeroboam built two golden calves in the northern kingdom. He just denied God altogether. Jeroboam, uh, uh, he spent time with uh, with uh, he spent time in in Egypt when he had to flee from Solomon, and when when he came back he he became king and he created had to make two golden calves. I mean he led Israel into abomination and apostasy. So the northern kingdom just turned their backs on God altogether, and the southern kingdom uh, they were just as bad. So what we have. As we go through 1 Kings and 2 Kings, we're looking at two sets of kings leading two different nations. But in both sets of kings, you only have a, a, a few good kings, and they're found in the southern kingdom. Most of the northern kingdom, uh, the northern kingdom was corrupt with corrupt men who turned their backs on God. And then the southern kingdom, only one or two who actually honored God. And so it's going to be very interesting as we continue. Next week, study chapter 12, starting with Rehoboam, and then 12 to the end of First Kings. Praise God. Well, bless God. I thank God for bringing us through this uh, uh, one first half of First Kings. And we learned a lot. We covered a lot of ground. And I pray that uh, if you, uh, you'll review this in, on the, in the uh, recording. The recording is available on my YouTube channel, on our website page. And you'll probably receive this um, recording in an email. So store these. Store these. If you have a Dropbox, put these recordings in your Dropbox so that when it comes time for you to teach this, uh, to someone else, you can recall this and review this, and, and these teachings will help you. We're going to stop our recording at this time and open up the class for uh, questions and answers. And uh, we always start with CK.